Good afternoon, everybody. MG here. MG Covers bringing you a brand new handicapping video. The title of this video is How Line Movement Can Save You Money. You're going to absolutely love the content I'm going to bring you in this video. Uh, it's going to drastically improve your handicapping. Before we get to that, as always, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you're watching this video for the very first time, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to learn about sports betting, how to handicap, how to get better at sports betting, you are at the right place. Subscribe to the channel. I have a ton of playlists, a ton of videos um, where you can learn a lot about sports betting. Also, too, if you want to follow me on all of the social media outlets, I am MG Covers, cover spelled with a Z. That's on Twitter. That's on Instagram. And if you follow me on Instagram, I put out a ton of content on my storyline uh, games that I see where there might be an edge. If I see reverse line movement, sometimes I post that. So just by following me on social, you'll get a lot of benefits. So without any further ado, let's talk about line movement, how it can save you money. There's been a lot of buzz, a lot of chatter about this um, on my page, uh, even with my own clients about how to understand line movement. What I want to do in this video is I want to make it as simple as possible for you to understand it um, because it can get confusing. I I totally understand that. And sometimes one of the difficulties I have, my brain goes 100 miles an hour and it's difficult for me to articulate the way my brain's thinking to make it simple where anybody can understand it. So I'm going to take my time with this video and basically explain line movement. So let's uh, look at this first. Now what this screenshot, this is an excerpt from my mentor in this business, a man named Bob McCune. I never met Bob McCune, but he wrote a lot of books. Old school guy, uh, wrote a lot of books in the 80s, 90s. Um, he was a professional bodybuilder, but then actually became a professional sports handicapper, was very, very good at his craft. Make another video about that, but if you want to Google Bob McCune sports betting, buy any of his books. They're loaded with a ton of content. A lot of the concepts that I use today, I got from Bob McCune, including this one I'm going to share with you here. Now, I can't remember the year which book this came from, but let's just uh, sort of read this together here. Let's slide this over. Okay. He says, one hour before the game in basketball or five to six hours before the game in football, the movement of the line abruptly changes to the opposite you need to bet based on the last movement. It's very important. Remember that last movement. The line does not move, and shortly before the match, there is a shift. Again, the last movement of the coefficients will be true. In other words, just to sort of summarize, he's basically saying, you know, the last line movement or the direction the line is moving is the direction you want to be in. Uh, to use Bob McCune's system, it is convenient to use coefficient comparison services that show the line movement of a line. And again, this book was written a while back. So basically what he's saying is, you know, um, you need to have a service uh, where you can see those line movements. And I've talked about that. Uh, the sites that I use, sportsbookreview.com and also oddstrader.com are two excellent sites that you can actually see the movement. So let's remove this screenshot. So just a sort of an introduction Line movement is a situational angle. And what I mean by that is the way that I teach sports betting, it's a situational angle just like if we're going to wager on an away team and away team, we want to check their record on the on the road. If a team is 4-1 and one on the road and we're playing them to win, that's a good situational angle. Another situational angle, if we're playing a team and say they're minus six and we look and see the last five games – they have covered that minus six in their last five games. That's a situational angle in our favor. So line movement is a situational angle. And this is a quick summary. We will never play a game based solely on line movement. Okay. But this is very important. We will not play a game based on line movement. That's very important. So if you're taking notes, it's a good thing to write down again. Uh, it's a situational angle. We will not play a game based solely on line movement, but we will pass on a game based solely on line movement. So let's dive into it and take a look at some real life examples. Okay, this was a game from yesterday. This was in college basketball, Radford, UNC Asheville. You're looking at a, a screenshot from oddstrader.com. And I had Radford as a favorite via my power rankings which means I had them favored to win this. So there was value in playing Radford. 
we had a few of the situational angles in our favor. And like always, we always want to check line movement. Now, one important thing about line movement and the way that I play games in past years, sometimes I would play a game early if I felt the line would move. I no longer do that because I think it's best to wait so that you can benefit from the line movement. Because if you play a game early, you don't get the benefit of line movement. And if you're on the wrong side, you know, you're on the wrong side there. So you can see there the opening line, excuse me, is Radford plus one and a half, UNC Asheville minus one and a half. So this line from opener to game time moves from Radford plus one and a half to Radford plus three and a half. So Radford was a small dog. Now they became a significant dog. So let's talk about what's happening to make this line movement. So what's happening is you look where it says 9.33 p.m. late that night on 123 the night before the line was UNC Asheville minus one and a half. So what happens? So you have a lot of people, specifically sharp money, on UNC Asheville. So if you have sharp money, a lot of money moving, uh, being played on UNC Asheville, that makes the other side go up, right? So they're taking uh, UNC Asheville. That line went from minus one and a half, and you can look at eight thirty-eight that morning, minus two and a half, to finally it closed at minus three and a half. It closed two points higher than when it started, and. What you'll see in line movement, line movement, most games will have some type of line movement. Maybe it moves a half a point to a point, you know, maybe even a point and a half. But when the line moves, you know, two points, I definitely pay attention at this point. So if you were in, in this example, we had Radford favored. We were going to play Radford, but you can see it was it was a pass because it had moved from plus one and a half all the way to plus three and a half because of the sharp money that was coming in on UNC Asheville. So we ended up passing on this play. And of course, you can see here now the game did go to overtime. So if you played Radford, I had a client that played them. Wasn't a bad play. It's just that you were going against the line movement and. The thing to remember about that is there's so many games to pick from every single day. So you can be selfish. You can be very discreet in your handicapping. So if a game doesn't line up, you know, if a line movement, if your game doesn't match, what am I trying to say? Yeah, I mean, if the line moves against you, just don't play it. Just pass because there's so many other games to pick from. So let's look at another example here. Okay, this is Albany. Now, this screenshot is from sportsbookreview.com. And those of you that don't know this, Pinnacle is one of the sharpest books out there. Generally, the offshore books, even books in Vegas, will parallel their movement to Pinnacle. So this was the Albany-New Hampshire game. We actually had, uh, yeah, we had New Hampshire. Am I thinking right? Yeah, we had New Hampshire. Uh, we were looking to play New Hampshire in this one. But if you can look where it says 124 at the very bottom, minus 2, look what happens to this line movement. Now, this wasn't huge line movement, but it was enough to give me pause where you can see it goes from, oh, let me push this up. I think there's, yeah, yeah, 2.5. Okay, that morning, you can see where it says 834, 124. Look down to New Hampshire there in the bottom uh, right-hand corner, minus 2.5. It goes from minus 2.5, then it goes to minus 2. Now you can see closer to game time, uh, right there. See where it says 12.58, it was at minus two. Then it goes at 145, it goes to minus one and a half. What did my mentor say there at the end? That last movement is the one you need to pay attention to. And then the overall direction, the line was moving against New Hampshire. That means you were having people, you were having sharp money coming in on Albany that were playing at two and a half, playing Albany at two and a half. The sports books move it to two. Uh, you continue to have money come in on Albany, so they kept lowering the line to get more money on New Hampshire. So therefore, if you were on New Hampshire, playing New Hampshire, you were going against line movement. So this was, again, a game that we passed on, and this score will blow you away here. Yeah, Albany absolutely destroyed uh, New Hampshire. So now just think about this for just a second. That was two games. Had I disregarded line movement, that would have been two losses for me. 
So that's why the title of this video, how line movement can save you money. And this, in that case, it's saving money. Let's look at one from this weekend. Again, I had a lot of clients on this. We had Wichita State. I can't remember my line for this game, but we had Wichita State as huge favorites here, okay? And you can see here the line open up at Wichita State. Plus two and a half, Memphis uh, was minus two and a half. Now, if you look down there where it says 120, this was the night before the game. The line was plus two and a half. Now look what happens overnight. It goes to plus three and a half. Then it goes back down 908. It goes back to plus two and a half. Now it goes, look where the line's going uh, as we get closer to tip off. It goes from, okay, that three and a half it got up to. Then it goes back down to two and a half. Now it goes to three and a half. Now it goes to four and a half. And it ends up closing at three and a half. So again, that was line movement that I just didn't feel comfortable with because, again, overall line movement was moving against us there. Didn't feel comfortable in playing it because of that. And here's the deal. One thing you have to realize about line movement, and, and again, this is kind of the theme of this whole video. When there's doubt, just pass on the game because how much money do you lose when you pass on a game? You lose zero, win or lose. And more times than not, if you play these type games where you're going against line movement, majority of the time, guys, you're going to lose. You are going to lose. And the beautiful thing about line movement is it's it's a way to sort of adjust or correct something that you missed. A lot of times line movement is because a player is injured. He's not, he's not playing in the game, and the line movement will react to that. So if it's something that you missed and you're handicapping, it will show up in the line movement. And again, that was a good pass because... Yeah, Memphis absolutely blew Wichita State out. So there is three games we save money. Now, like always in sports betting, there's exceptions to the rule. And let's talk about this. This is a, a game that we actually sort of reversed our um, thought process and the way that we capped. Okay, Denver-Phoenix. We had this game capped as my power rankings had this game even. Okay. So it was even. So when I was looking at the uh, uh, lines, lines open up. It was Denver plus one and a half, Phoenix minus one and a half. Phoenix was the favorite, right? Now look where, let's look at, say, let's come in here. Yeah, look at 122, 420. Scroll all the way down where it says Denver at 420. The day before, it was plus one and a half, which is what it opened. Look what happens overnight, minus two and a half. So when you see an abrupt shift, that usually means, for an NBA especially, an injury. Well, Booker was was listed as questionable at this point. Booker, if you don't know anything about NBA, really good player for Phoenix, integral part of their offense. So if he's not playing, that would give Denver a nice little edge there. And you can see here at 930, it goes back to 2, minus 2.5. I mean, minus 2. Then it goes up to minus 2.5. Then it goes up to minus 3.5. So when I was watching this line movement, I knew that my power rankings had it even. In this example, I'm pretty sure we played this at minus two. So I already knew, um, based on what I was reading on the uh, Twitter and doing some research on Booker, that he was not going to uh, play. And then, of course, once they officially announced he wasn't going to play, that's when that line went to minus three and a half. I think we were able to play it at minus two. And sure enough, that was a case where – You know, Denver won that one. Of course, they won it in overtime, but still, those are examples that um, more times than not, if you follow the line movement, either make sure your wager is with the line movement. And again, all the other stuff applies as well. You have to make sure that you have value when you play a game. Uh, make sure you're not on the public side and make sure you're playing non-public teams. So, all right. So sort of summarize this again. When you're looking at line movement, it will save you money so many times. And I know you can't hardly read this. This is, um, I teach my clients this. What I do every morning, I write down all the games with value and all the sports that I'm capping. So currently I'm capping NHL, NCAA basketball, and NBA. It looks like we have about, what, seven games for NHL, maybe about 10 for basket, NBA, uh, college basketball, and about six games for NBA. And then if I just write down value, I don't look. I don't look at line movement. I just want to look at games with value because line movement can move, right? And then I cap all of these games. And if I eliminate them for whatever reason, if they're a public team, if there's a situational angle moving against us or whatever, 
Maybe we're looking at a road team. I just put an X through them. Now, what's interesting, we actually played yesterday. We played Boston minus six. That was a winner. Uh, I circle the games, the games that I'm going to play. You look over there at the left, Calgary. We, we played Calgary in the NHL. We lost that one. But we did hit L.A. Huge dog hit. Hit the Kings for plus 170. So we played three, we won two. We ended up winning uh, right at uh, about half a unit. So it was a really good day. Now look right there in NCAA basketball in the middle of that where it says, you see the star beside Radford in New Hampshire. That means that when I put a star, I'm probably going to play these games based on what happens on the line movement. Ladies and gentlemen, if I play Radford in New Hampshire, that's a losing day. Okay, maybe not a losing day, but I would have probably, I'd have probably lost a little bit that, that LA Kings game helped out. But the point is because of line movement, me being sensitive to line movement and not playing Radford in New Hampshire, we were able to have a really, really solid, profitable day. That's why line movement is so, so important. And you have to respect that line movement and make sure that you're not going against it. It's just a smart way to wager. Um, it's one of the things this past year, those of you that have followed me for a long time, I had the first losing season of my entire sports betting career since 2015. Last year, one of the reasons was I neglected line movement. Um, so I'll never do that again. Just got sort of sloppy with my handicapping. And, and it's just one of the things I've really put an emphasis on. And you have to as a sports better. Because, again, here's a another – let me get this screen off. I'm going to show you – just ex explain it. I, I shared this with a – I can't remember if he was a client or not. Here's another way to look at line movement. Pretend there's 10 people that make a line move, and you're one of those people, right? This is a very simple way to think about this. There's 10 people that make a line movement move, and all of those 10 people are sharps just like me. And let's say we have a meeting before every game to discuss potential plays. So let's go to that Wichita State Memphis game. So I'm I'm the first one to speak to tell which game that I see has value, which team I'm going to play. So again, nine of the sharps in the room. I'm one of them. So I say, hey guys, I see value with Wichita State. I have value. I have Wichita State favored via my power rankings. We have several situational angles in our favor. Let's say there's one other sharp that agrees with me. Hey, I agree with Wichita State as well. The other eight sharps in the room look at the two of us and say, hey, we're all playing Memphis. Okay, would that not give you pause? Absolutely, if you're assuming that everybody else is on the same level. That's basically what line movement is, okay? You're using, you know, sh sharp movement in order to determine whether or not you're going to play or not play that game. So that's a great way, uh, a sort of a simplification of it to think about it. So, you know, if the majority were on Memphis, does that mean, you know, you should be playing Wichita State? Absolutely not. And for me, the way I teach it, it doesn't mean I'm going to automatically flip and just play Memphis because then I'll be going against my power rankings. So for me, I just simply pass on that game. That's how that, you know, I sort of process it. So again, just a quarter, sort of quick review. Line movement is a situational angle. Um, we will not base a play solely on line movement, but we will pass on a game where line movement is moving against us. Uh, a line will generally move a point to a point and a half, but when a line moves, say, hard two points against us, um, that would definitely be an indication of a, a, or an indicator that we probably shouldn't be on that team. So anyway, hopefully that helps. I want to do a quick review of some stuff going on at the website mgcovers.com. If you are a client, you now have access to the UFC model. This was a model one of my students built. I basically coached him through it. He did all the work, and it is absolutely money. We had Dustin Poirier as the favorite against Conor McGregor, and, of course, we had clients cash big on that. I think the line actually closed, depending on the book, somewhere around plus 265. And you might be saying, well, hey, a lot of people thought Dustin was going to win. Here's the deal. You're missing out. Our stat model with no bias factored in that was 100% statistically driven, predicted Poirier would win that fight. And that's real important uh, to remember when you're uh, – or, or a real important point because that was statistically driven with no bias factored in. 
If you go to my Instagram page, I posted all the other fights where uh, the stat model had value. So if you're a client, you have access to that model. And then finally, just a little update on what we're doing. Uh, last 60 days, really, really profitable, up $9,600. This is taken from my monitoring service, sportswatchmonitor.com. If you're not familiar with the monitoring service, I send them all my plays each day. Once I send them, I can't change them. They post the results and keep track of all that. Very credible service out of Las Vegas. A lot of your top handicappers are there as well. But I want to, what I want to point out, if you look there beside the percentage, we hit 49%, guys. The way that I handicap, the way that I teach, we play a lot of money line dogs. And what this allows you, and we hit a lot of money line dogs, what this allows you to do, you can cut, you can turn a really, really good profit, but you'd only have to hit you know, 50% winners. You can see we, we hit less than 50%, but we're still able to turn, you know, 9.6 units in two months, which is really, really good. So again, it's the way that I teach. It's the way that I've always handicapped. And if you, obviously, if you want to become a client, have access to all my power rankings for uh, sports we're capping right now, which include NHL, NCAA basketball, NBA, you get access for just $29.95 per month. Um, you get all my power rankings for all sports. You also get all of my coaching videos that teach you how to interpret those uh, power rankings and how to handicap. And if you want to get all of that, in addition to all my plays for all sports, you can do that. That's $49.95 per month, and you get everything I just mentioned in addition to my plays. If you add that up times 12, that's $600 for the entire year. But if you prepay and join for an entire year, you get 50% off. $299 gives you access to everything on the site, power rankings, uh, all my coaching videos, as well as all of my plays for all sports. There is a link in the description box uh, to sign up for that. I'm exhausted. This video is over. Hopefully it brought you a ton of value. Again, remember, uh, be conscious of line movement and you don't want to go against line movement. Hopefully this video helps. Hope everybody has a profitable day. Talk to you soon. Peace.